five seconds to go. A big shot here from half court. We'll see from the three point line. Tatch throws it up. It's good. It's good. Keith State wins it. 68 65. Finds Martin now. Gets a screen. Schleiman for three. Puts it in. Burke stays with it, gets the second chance. Points. And the foul as well. Here we go. 15 seconds left in the game. Oh. Kenzie Bennett is by herself. She gets it to fall. She's headed to the line for the and one. Oh my Kenzie God. Bennett, the senior. Two second difference. Yeah, two, second, two second separation there for the shot game clock. Oh, trying to bank it. Oh, and she got it. Keith State will be the 2016 2017 Little East Conference champion for the first time in program history. Rush the floor, Keith State, your conference champ. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this installment of Women's Basketball, where your Keen State Owls will take on the Southern Maine Huskies. I'm JJ Blank, joined here by Logan Peranto. Logan, how are we doing today? I'm doing great, JJ. Um, ready, looking forward to uh, some LEC basketball today on both the women's and the men's side. Oh, absolutely. The last time the Owls played was this past Wednesday against Castleton, which resulted in a 59-45 to loss. That loss extended this game, the six-game losing streak that the Owls are currently on right now. Who are some of the players that are looking to lead the Owls to a much-needed victory today, Logan? Yeah, to start, it's the freshman, Valerie Lutze. Uh, she went four for seven from three-point range last game against Castleton, and she had a productive 12 points throughout the game. Their scoring is something the Owls will need today and going forward in the season, especially against an LEC opponent today. And then another player is the sophomore wing, Elizabeth Gagne. We had an interview with Coach Boucher after the game, and he mentioned that she's a player that never gives up. Um, and she does a lot of things that you might not see in the, in the box score. Uh, she was the team's leading scorer with 13 points uh, in, in the game against Castleton and shot 50% from, from three. Gagne has shown that she can be a productive part of this team and try to lead the Owls to wins. Oh, absolutely. The Huskies are on a losing streak of their own right now and losing the last five games which has resulted in a 4-11 and record for them. But that puts this team in seventh place, and they're actually one spot ahead of Keen in the LEC standings. Vanessa Vaughn is a player to watch for on this Huskies team today. She leads them in scoring with 11.3 points a game while also grabbing about five boards each game. So she'll be interesting to watch. So don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen, because we'll be back shortly for the start of the game after starting lineups in the National Anthem. So when I ask students why Keen State, the students say unanimously it's the sense of community. The feel when you walk on this campus is immediately a sense of belonging, a sense of safety, a sense of welcome, and a sense of opportunity and promise. And so I think our students feel that when they come to our campus and they experience it when they join us. Why students choose this campus is the sense and feel and also the opportunity and the promise of that opportunity for them when they're making the decision and why they stay is that we deliver on that promise. We have students from urban environments, from rural environments, and when they come to Keene State in those first weeks of forming a new community, they bring all of those experiences together to create a better Keene State. It's a campus small enough to feel a sense of recognition and identity, and a campus big enough to feel part of something bigger than yourself. This isn't a passive experience, so please get engaged, find a club, make a new group of friends, get involved in a recreational sport activity, in an intramural sport, get involved in a creative performance, go see a show, be a part of this community and squeeze everything you can out of Keene State. And if you do that, I know, I am confident you will have an exceptional experience and your life will be changed as a result of it. A single thread is unique, like each of us, full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. But we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, we can celebrate our differences 
embrace each other and fortify the ties among us. A single thread can fray, yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms. A new strength created by the fabric of the whole. Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our threads, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible. The true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. We can achieve so much more when we are all as one. Passion is love. Passion is love for what you do. Because I think when you face challenges, it comes down to how much you want it and how much you love it. Passion is what keeps you going forward. Seeing so many people that were like-minded and so hardworking in their sport and academics, being surrounded by like-minded people makes you want to be more passionate. I think it pushes you to a, a different level that maybe you didn't think you had. And you can do the best of both worlds and love all of it. When do you want me to go on? Just... 
And we welcome you back, ladies and gentlemen, and I will now read to you the starting lineups for the game. Starting first for Southern Maine, number 10, Maria DeGifico. Number 11, Vanessa Vaughn. Number 15, Franny Ramsdell. Number 21, Ashley Asito. And number 22, Tamara Gould. And for your Keen State Owls, number 2, Ariana Murray. Number 12, Julia Desart. Number 13, Valerie Lutze. Number 14, Kenzie Durnford. And at number 40, in the middle, Riley Burgess. What are you looking for in today's game, Logan? Um, a Keen State win. Uh, you know, it's been a little bit since they've gotten a win. Um, a win here today on their home court would give them a lot of confidence going forward for sure. And obviously it's a an LEC team, so you always want to beat these fellow in-conference opponents, when they, especially when they come to your home court. Oh, absolutely. Tip is up and we are underway, and it's taken control early by Keen State. The start has the ball. Over to Lutze. Lutze looking for a screen. Desar on the inside of Durnford. Durnford, little jump hook. Rebound taken back by Durnford. Lutze, tees up. Rebounds taken by Asito. Gives it over to Jifico. Seems to be running point guard for this team. Over to Vaughn. Vaughn, a prolific scorer, as we stated before the game began. Ramsdell will tee up for three. That's good. Ramsdell from downtown makes it a 3-0 lead for the Huskies. And she saw the space there and took it as the Huskies are going to come out with a little bit of pressure early on. Desart dribbles to the corner over to Lutze. She'll give it to Murray. Murray's been leading the team in scoring. Murray on the inside at Durnford. But she'll try the hook again. Can't hit it, but Burgess goes in for the board. Puts it up, can't hit. But Burgess able to put it in. Riley Burgess, relentless on the glass. Relentless indeed, and great effort from her, her to read the ball off the rim and able to put it back up for two. Doesn't give up on it, too. Exactly. Gould couldn't hit. Rebound taken by Southern May on the inside. Good interior D from Keene State. Here's Desart. Murray from downtown. Durnford tries to get it. Tries to save it. Great hustle from Kenzie Durnford. Yeah, Murray's shot looked good from here. Just a bit too much on it, a bit to the right. Uh, good hustle from Durnford trying to get the offensive board, trying to keep the possession alive. Yeah, what did you say last, last game? Looking a little bit too much mustard on that one. <laughs> yes. Asito on the inside. Here's Ramsdell to the corner for three. Tamara Gould from downtown makes it a four-point lead. Full court trap. Here's Burgess. Desart over to the side. Here's Durnford. Over to Lutze. Lutze looking for some room. Desart over to Lutze. Oh, nice spin move by Lutze. Puts it up. Great move by number 13. Yeah, and a great move indeed. And she did did a good job of jump stopping, getting her um, getting her defender in the air, and then moving to her right and hooks it up for two. Ramsdale will pick up the foul there from Burgess. That's her first foul. Southern Maine will take it out on underneath. Jiffico. Looking for something. Here's Ramsdell. Ball will stay with Southern Maine with 11 seconds left on the shot clock. You want to control the game at your own pace. If you want to play slow and eat as much shot clock as possible, then they're doing a great job. And that's another foul for Burgess. That's her second foul already. King State foul, number 40, Riley Burgess. It's her first, team second. 
or just an important player for this Keene State team. Needs to do what she can to stay on the floor. Ramsdell, she'll dribble in. Out to Vaughn. Great move. But they said it was a travel. Tamar Gould turns the ball over. Southern Maine doing a great job of establishing a full court press way early in this game. Yeah, trying to turn the Owls over, get a couple extra possessions here early. Keen State doing a great job of just weaving through it. Murray thought about it. Here's Murray, nice dribble move on the inside. Ariana Murray can't hit, but nice rebound by Burgess. Stripped away from the Huskies guards and she got a bit unlucky as she brought it down to her knee area. And I believe it was Gold that stripped it away from Burgess. And it'll be Vaughn who drives in the inside. Ariana Murray picking up the early foul. It'll be Vaughn at the line for two. Well, it hits the first. And hits the second. Murray looking for someone. She can't find anything. The start. King State trying to control it. Here's Murray. Murray trying to get around the Durnford screen. She has it, 13 seconds left in the shot clock. Here's Durnford. Durnford dribbles down low. Gives it to Lutze, five seconds left. Lutze outside to Murray. Murray will put it up. Bit too strong. Great Jiffy pass. Wow. Nice pass by the point guard, number 10. Maria DeGifico. And that'll bring us to a timeout where the score is Southern Maine 10, Keene State 4. I remember writing in the second grade that I wanted to be a teacher and I always knew that I was going to be a teacher. I started school a year early and it created challenges for me because I wasn't able to pick up material as fast as the other students. Outside of school, my Jaju would quiz me on my math facts and read with me. It showed me that even though I had challenges in school, there were still people who wanted to help me. In high school, I knew I had to work harder than everyone else to get the same results, but I had teachers that would help me in subject areas outside of their own because they could relate to how I felt. The way these interactions with my Jaju and my teachers made me feel while I was learning is the inspiration for how I'd like my students to feel. I'm able to build relationships and be vulnerable with my students when they're struggling because I've been in their shoes and I know exactly how they feel. Being able to relate to them from my own experience has become a massive asset in becoming a teacher. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I was just informed that we're having a bit of trouble to get our scoreboard up, so I'm going to do my very best to remind you what the score is. Right now it is 10-4 in favor of Southern Maine. Logan, what have you seen so far from Southern Maine getting this press? Yeah, we were just talking about it during the break, is that their press, especially on the last possession, Keene State did a great job of beating it, but it takes a lot off the shot clock. I think they had about half the shot clock remaining when they were did get it. Uh, to a spot where they could set up offense. Couldn't really get anything going and it forced kind of a, a long a long look from Ariana Murray late in the shot clock. So I think that's something Southern Maine's going to continue to do and try to work in, or work Keene State in these late shot clock uh, type of shots. It's almost as if they're trying to force Keene State into playing at a faster pace, which from what we've seen is not something they're used to. What a pass from Ariana Murray inside to Kenzie Durnford. When you can make that type of pass, you don't need to set up offense. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great look from Ariana Murray to my the back side. My goodness, hopefully we can get some more of those. Here's DeGifico. Ramsdell. You've seen a man-to-man -man look from Keene State for the first time in this afternoon's game. That's another foul from number two, Ariana Murray. I believe he called it on Lutze. Oh, oh. I thought it was on Murray because she was looking at the ref like he had a couple heads. <laughs> Score is 10-6 in favor of Southern Maine. 
A little bit of a press there by Murray on Gould. Here's a Jiffico up top. Here's Ramsdell. Here's Vaughn. He'll put it up and connects. Vanessa Vaughn able to get the deuce. 12 to 6 lead. Great take from Vaughn and strong with her left hand as well. Murray trying to look for Burgess. Here's first. Murray looking to get inside, and she does. Oh, and what a block from Tamara Gould. Well, <laughs> hard over height there. It was a good take. Ariana Murray had a lane, and then just Gould came out of nowhere and made an, a great defensive play. Nice scrappy play from number 22. And here's number 22, Elizabeth Gagne, checking in for Valerie Lutze. We talked about Gagne before, before the game started in our pregame, how much heart she has and how Coach Boucher loves when she's out there. Tamara Gould connects on the first. And here's something you don't see very often. Grace First is in the game. She didn't really get into the Castleton game until the last time as Tamara Gould misses the second free throw. You kind of get the feeling that Coach Boucher, as Burgess travels there, you kind of get the feeling that um, Coach Boucher is looking for smaller, quicker guards to put out there in order to break that press. The Jiffico looking for something. Aceto. Tries to dribble on the inside, can't get it over Durnford. Here's Ramsdell, over to Gould. Gould thought about it, Gould will drive down low. Double team. Nice play, forced the jump ball for Keene State. And it'll be Southern main ball. Scores 13-3. Great double team from two Keene State Owls players. Unfortunate not to get a steal, but a jump ball. 4.05 remaining in the first quarter. Here's Ramsdell. Ramsdell thought about it, saw Burgess and said, heck no. And another foul there on number 40, Riley Burgess. That's her third foul in the first quarter. And that's going to have to force number 23, Samantha Lee, to come in. I thought she got unlucky there. Thought her, she played good defense, moved her feet, got in front, but ref saw it otherwise, and she's going to have her second foul of the game. When you take out someone like Burgess, who you can plop in the middle and is good at passing, good at finding the open person down low, like, that hurts you if you're Keene State. As Ramsdell hits both free throws, extends the lead to nine. And it's not only this, what she can do to contribute to the points, but she's also a, a, an upperclassman and a leader on this, on this Keene State Owls team. Here's first, Lauren Murray playing the two-man game. 20 seconds remaining in the shot clock. She's looking for something. Here's Murray. Lee will set the screen, drip down. And here's first from downtown. Rebound taken by Southern Maine. Cool thought about it. Aceto. Wow. And gets the friendly <laughs> bounce, my goodness. Friendly indeed. That was Djifiko, my mistake. I believe that was... The two, yes. But either way, got, got a good bounce there, for sure. Here's Gagne. Vaughn. Oh, and a nice play by Durnford. That's a jump ball. That's Keene State possession. What a play by number 14. That's huge, and it earns Keene State the possession back. We talked about somebody like Gagne earlier. She came off the bench. She never gives up, and... Had 13 points last time against Castleton, and that go is good for a season high for her. So off the bench, you get a, a girl who's going to give you her all as well as some points, and it showed against Castleton with the team high and the season high for her. Absolutely. Southern Maine will get possession back. Score is 17-6 as the Huskies lead. Number 20, Gabby Green will check in for Vanessa Vaughn. The 
Jiffico will bring it down. Gagne's on it. Here's Fleming. Fleming has an open lane, puts it up and puts it in. Amy Fleming. Good take from Amy Fleming. Strong with the left hand. Inside to Lee. Askel will now check in for Southern Maine. It'll remain Keene State ball. They seem to be doubling the players on Keene State that may or may not have the best passing abilities because they're trying to force them into turnovers. It's pretty smart if you're Southern Maine. Murray will take it, looking for that lead screen. Ariana Murray gets inside. Here's first, thought about it. Gagne. Gagne likes to drive, you know that. Inside to Lee, Lee puts it up, and gets the and one, Samantha Lee will go to the line for an and one. Great move by number 23. Yeah, that's a good pass from Gagne as well. Put it where she knew Samantha could get it, and only her she would get it, and she makes a good play on the ball, and then takes a dribble and finishes well through contact. Keene State's first free throw attempts. Can't hit, but Dernford almost gets it, and Lee gets her own rebound. Here's first. Dernford from downtown. Kenzie Dernford lighting it up from downtown, 19 to 11. 207 remaining in the first quarter. I thought they had a swing there. Looked like Murray was open. She decided to go back to Dernford, and Dernford sticks it. Fleming cannot connect. Murray gets the long board, and they're going to run. There's not going to be a press on that one. Here's Murray, dribbles in, look for something. Here's Gagne, she pulls up. Aceto. And they're saying that Gould traveled. There's some more life breathed into it if you're Keene State. Yeah, a couple of buckets, and uh, uh, forced a turnover right there. Let's see if they can capitalize and cut this lead. Lee, Lee almost turns it over. And it'll be Keene State ball. A little lucky break there for the Owls. I'll tell you what, Logan, I can't stop thinking about that Gould block. That was, that was really <laughs> impressive. Yes. We, had a, we had a really good view of it, too. Yes, we did. And it was out of nowhere, it seemed like. It, yeah, it was essentially. out of, <laughs> he thought the play was dead. Burris has it stripped, taken away by Fleming, and it'll be a jump ball for us. It'll be Southern Maine ball. If nothing else can come out of that possession, at least it wasn't just a turnover. You forced it into a jump ball, and hopefully that'll come back later for the Owls. Gould will control the ball. Inside, Fleming. Taken away by Samantha Lee. Can't wrestle it up, but good job to get her hands in the middle. Aceto, inside. Gabby Green gets a little bit of a friendly roll. 21-11 lead for, for the Huskies. Murray trying to do it herself over to first. Dernford might have been fouled there. Here's Gagne, a little spin move, puts it up, can't connect. It's a good move from Gagne. Couldn't get it to fall. Here come the Huskies. On the inside again, here's Gabby Green. And that'll be a foul, setting Gabby Green to the line. As Kate McAvoy will now check into the game, replacing first. Can't connect on the first one. Both teams right now struggling to hang on to the ball. Both teams have four turnovers right now. Green misses both of them. Gagne will grab the board. Gagne's looking for someone, finds McAvoy.
Al's trying to set something up. Murray looking for something, gets the screen from Durnford. Over to McAvoy again. McAvoy thinks about pulling up inside of Durnford. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. Ball's taken away. Elizabeth Gagne laid out for it, couldn't get it. Eight seconds remaining, and here comes Gould. Over to Asito. Back over to Gould. Dribbles, puts it up, and hits. Tamara Gould able to put it in, makes it a 23-11 lead at the end of the first quarter. We'll be back for the start of the second after this. Passion's love. Passion is love for what you do. Because I think when you face challenges, it comes down to how much you want it and how much you love it. Passion is what keeps you going forward. Seeing so many people that were like-minded and so hardworking in their sport and academics, being surrounded by like-minded people makes you want to be more passionate. I think it pushes you to a, a different level that maybe you didn't think you had. And you can do the best of both worlds and love all of it. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're going to have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, be a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. And welcome back to the start of the second quarter. Keene State down 12. I will tell you this, Logan. I did like the defense that I was seeing, especially in the paint from these Owls in the first quarter. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> they had a lot of girls packed in, denying passes as usual. Uh, a couple good deflections from people like Lee and Lutzi when she was on the floor. She got her hands in the passing lanes very well. A little, bit of, a little bit of a different look here. Here's McAvoy. Lily Krasinski's in now, along with Alibrandi. Gagne will take it. Gagne thought about it. Over the top to McAvoy. Inside, Krasinski. Krasinski puts it up. Draws the foul. Can't get it to go, but we'll go to the line to shoot two. That's really one of the first times you've seen Keene State able to work into something in the half court. Um, got a decent look with Krasinski, and now she finds herself at the line for two. And she cans the first one. First free throw made of the game for the Owls. Owls already have seven fouls this game, and according to Southern Maine's three. Here's Krasinski again. And connects on the second one, a little bit of a friendly roll. And part of that Keene State seven fouls is Burgess and Lutzi who found them, find themselves with two fouls early and have sat for most of this game so far. Bit of foul trouble early for the both of them. Almost taken away. Ramsdell will keep control of it. Over to Fleming. Fleming looking for the screen. Samantha Lee's right there to meet her. And there's Haskell from three. Shot clock violation, it'll be Keene State ball. Good job by Keene State on their perimeter def defense that time. Keep the Huskies from scoring. Gagne will trigger it in. And you're speaking of that perimeter defense, and I thought it was Samantha Lee who had a great hedge off the screen, kind of on the opposite side of the court, forced a cross-court pass and a quick three late in the shot clock. McAvoy with it. Over to Lee. Alibrandi, over to Gagne, ra able to wrestle it. Seven seconds up in the shot clock. McAvoy on the inside. Lee couldn't grab it. Here's Haskell. Vaughn, over to Rams Bell, thought about it. Over to Roderick. 12 seconds remain on the shot clock. Ramsdell 
Over to Fleming. Fleming's looking for something. Vanessa Vaughn. Ramsdale will put it up. Can't hit. Rebound by Lee. Lee almost has it taken away and does. My goodness. Amy Fleming never gave up on the play. Gagne with it. Al seemed to be slowing down a little bit. Here's Alabrandi. Over to Gagne. Gagne pulls up. No hesitation. My goodness, what a play from Elizabeth Gagne. And I think she knew that was going in. She started running back before the ball even hit the, hit the net. So. That's cold. <laughs> and it'll be Keene State's ball. That's a play that if that doesn't go in, you might find yourself on the bench. She had a clear lane in to go for two. But not even thinking about it, number 22, Elizabeth Gagne. Avery Stewart will check in for Jackie Alabrandi. Here's Stewart with the ball. McAvoy wanting to speed it up. McAvoy bobbled it. She'll go inside. Outside of Gagne, that's her spot. And here come the Huskies. The Jifico. Ramsdell. I thought that was going back uh, in, yeah. Logan. <laughs> I thought it was going to be another lucky roll. It looked like it. My goodness. Oh, McAvoy speeding down court. Krasinski will put it up. I feel like Krasinski almost got the, the and one, but will still go to the line for two. Billy Krasinski has been very good at getting to the line so far for the Owls. And before the free throw is even shot, Aceto will come into the game. Krasinski cans the first. You have a puzzled look on your face, Logan. What's going through your head? Just a little interesting as the subs during free throws. Um, not really used to, before both shots, the subs can come in. But Good job from great Samantha by, Lee. Great, by, great, great play by Samantha Lee. Love the offensive rebound and put it up back, back up for two, and now this is a six-point game. The Chifico. To go to Ramsdell. And they say she traveled. What a nice way to play defense in the perimeter. Samantha Lee has really shown up in the absence of Riley Burgess, who had to sit with early foul trouble, has played excellent perimeter defense, has gotten offensive boards, and has even gotten some points sprinkled in there. So good job by number 23. Ariana Murray looking for something. Finds Lee back over to McAvoy. Got to get it over. Lee with it. Looking for someone. Over to McAvoy. Stewart. Thought about giving it to Krasinski. Says, I'll take it myself. Looking for something. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Four seconds left. McAvoy. McAvoy got to force something up. Shot clock violation. And that'll be a shot clock violation that'll go into Southern Maine's hands. Yeah, and a broken possession there for Keene State. A bit unfortunate you didn't break the press, but just couldn't, couldn't get anything going on in the half court afterwards. Ariana Murray will pick up another foul. That's her second foul of the game. And it'll send Vanessa Vaughn to the line to shoot two. Vaughn misses on the first one.
Keen State trying hard to get over this full court press. See you play a little bit slower. They're saying that Stewart stepped out of bounds. Difficult, over to Gould. Ramsdell, up top to Jiffico. She'll drive it herself, puts it up. And they're saying that Krasinski fouled. As Julia Desart will now come into the game, replacing Kay McAvoy. Hits the first. Extends it to an eight point lead for the Huskies. And she cans both. Krasinski will take it out. Here's Stewart over to Desart. Back to Stewart. Inside to Lee. Lee will take it in herself. Nice pass into Krasinski. Krasinski almost has it stripped away. And that'll be a foul on Tamara Gould. Huskies foul number 22, Tamara Gould. Elizabeth Gagne checks back into the game, replacing Gallery Lutze. Desart will trigger in. Desart. And it's a carry by Julia Desart. Jiffico to Gould. Gould trying to lull Julia Desart. Here's the Jiffico. And that'll be a foul on the floor before the shot. And that'll take us to a timeout where the score is 28-19 in favor of Southern Maine. We'll be back shortly. It's always been more than just a game. It is a legacy. Support the USA Basketball Foundation as we look to expand that legacy. For her, for them, for us. All of us, together. And we welcome you back, ladies and gentlemen. Want to talk a little bit about Coach Keith Boucher right now. Logan, what do you have for us? Yeah, he's entering his, this is his 34th season at the, at the helm of this Keaton State women's basketball program. Uh, he's had an impressive resume. Uh, Little East ch Tournament Champions in 2017. You and I got to talk to a couple players from that team, and he's really just the leader of his, of his players year in and year out. I feel like all of them look up to him. He expects a lot out of his players, but he also gives a lot to this program and uh, is a real role model in this women's basketball program here at Keene State College. He's also one of my favorite people that I've ever interviewed. <laughs> he is an absolute riot, and he's not even trying to be. That's just him. I love the way he talks about his players. If his players are playing bad, he'll let you know about it. And if they're playing great, he'll also let you know. He's a great, he's a great coach like that. Exactly, not afraid to tell it as it is. As we welcome you back from that weird on the floor foul that they called. Here's Ramsdell in the corner to Gould. The start, nice defense on Gould. Nice shot by Ramsdell though. 
And That's we've, a three. We've seen Ramsdale kind of look off a couple of those looks, and I've kind of been questioning it from over here. Why? It's, I'm pretty sure she's two for two from three so far in this one. So maybe just it's just being her unselfish, but when she lets it fly, it's, it looks good. Here's Stewart trying to work on a dribbling package inside to Gagne. Gagne puts it up, can't hit, but will go to the line and shoot two. And Kansas the second. Nice couple free throws there by Elizabeth Gagne. Keene State now five for seven from the free throw line and Southern Maine is eight for 12 from the free point line. That's the free throw line. I mixed up the words in my head a little bit there. Here's Ramsdell. Good defense by Krasinski. And cans the three. Ashley Aceto from downtown. Almost a steal there by Ramsdell. Something you've seen from this um, Huskies team is that they're not afraid to share the rock. They, uh, as I said, some of them pass, have passed up open shots for better looks. And just about everybody on their team that has entered the game has scored for the Huskies. So they're not afraid. It's not one person making all the plays. It's it's more of a team effort offensively. Yeah, and it's one of those things that it's harder for us to guard them because since they're all scoring, we can't pick one person that we want to double team or that we want to go at when we're on defense. Because since everyone's scoring, there's not really someone you can really look at. Owl's now in the bonus. And Julia Desar will go to the line, shoot two. Desar hits the first. Could make this only a 10 point lead for the Huskies if she's able to connect. God. Logan, we have to stop. We have to stop. We can't keep. We can't keep doing this. Every time we say, "Man, we like, oh, she could hit it," they always miss. Every time in men and women's games. Yeah, I remember doing it to Jeff the other day. I said he was 100% from the free throw line, and of course, he missed the next one after, right after that. So. I'm sure he blames you solely. <laughs> Keen State trying to fight for the rebound down low. Almost got it. And Gould is fouled. Boucher kind of, I looked over at him and he just has his head down over there on the bench, I believe. He thinks his owls should have grabbed that ball and gotten the defensive rebound instead. The Huskies are going to get, a, gonna get a, another possession as they get the one out of it. That'll be Vanessa Vaughn going to the line to shoot one, try to complete the three point play. And hits 36-22 lead for the Huskies. Here's the start. She'll bring it down. She's quick. Great defense by Franny Ramsdell. The start looking for someone. Here's Durnford. Almost turns it over. Gagne has it. Gagne will go to the middle. Over to Stewart. Gagne, she might have to pull up. Three seconds left. Two seconds left. Aceto in the corner. Ramsdell. 
Ramsdell trying to work on Durnford. She'll get in. Can't get anything up, and what a pass. Great cut there from Gold. Here's Dessart. Nice little J. Garnier will have to get in front of Ramsdell. Offensive foul, it'll go Keen State's way. Great job from Elizabeth Gagne. Offensive foul, number 15, Franny Ramsdell, just second. Ramsdell, second foul of the game. Stewart will take it. Over the side, just over her head. Good effort by Stewart to try to grab it, unable to do so. Gould will control it. Fleming inside. Askel. And that's a three from Amy Fleming. 39-22 lead. Here's Stewart. Dessart. Decided Krasinski. Krasinski wanted that one. <laughs> she did. She definitely wanted that one. And a nice steal by Krasinski. Nice heads up play by Krasinski. Able to throw it off her leg. And she hustled all the way back after a turnover of her own. She's able to steal it right back and make a, like you said, heads up play to retain Al's possession. Southern Maine has six steals in the first half. Make that seven. Make that seven steals. Julie to start trying to play some defense. You have numbers. Here's Krasinski. Nice play by Vanessa Vaughn. Not a terrible look from Krasinski there. Just a bit unlucky as it was deflected and then obviously the Huskies able to get possession and draw the foul. It'll be Gagne's first foul of the game. She has five points. And Vanessa Vaughn will go to the line to shoot. Smith Lee will now check into the game. Replacing Lily Krasinski. Desart. 43 seconds remaining. Desart will dribble it in. Over to Durnford. Durnford pulls up. Rebounds taken away, and now we'll be brought down by Tamara Gould. Has, a, has some room, and there'll be a blocking foul, and she'll go to the line. King State foul number 23, Samantha Lee, first. Hits the first. Keen State with 14 turnovers in the first half so far. We have about 25 point five seconds remaining. Yeah, it's in large part that two to that press as well as when they get in the half court, they feel a little, the pressure is still there. And they feel a little rushed after beating the press so quickly that they don't really slow it down a lot, so. Stewart pulls up. Not a bad look from Avery Stewart. Yeah, you can't get low on yourself though. You gotta keep shooting that if you're Avery Stewart. God, they almost got it. And with that, it'll take us to the end of the first half where the score is 43-22 in favor of Southern Maine. We'll be back shortly for the start of that second half. Stay with us.
Hello and welcome to the Inside Owl Athletics Top 10 Plays for the Fall 2022 Semester. I'm Quinn Kimmel. The fall semester had some incredible action. Keene State claimed a pair of Little East Conference Championships, set several milestones, and set us up for an exciting spring. At number 10, a terrific goal for men's soccer. With Keene State down 3-1 against Eastern Connecticut State, freshman Nicholas Hanau Vasquez receives the through ball from Noah Spaulding and fires a shot past the goalie to get the Owls back into the game. At number 9, a game winner from women's soccer. In the 14th minute against UMass Dartmouth, Captain Alexis Skinner picks up the ball from over 30 yards away and hammers home a rocket that grazed the goalie's hands and finds its way into the back of the net. Skinner's first goal of the season gave the Owls a crucial Little East Conference victory. Our number eight play is the prowess of sophomore Molly Murray from the penalty spot. The Owls midfielder was a perfect five for five on penalty strokes this season and is seven for nine in her career. She netted penalty stroke goals against Colby Sawyer, Eastern Connecticut, Plymouth State, Smith, and WPI this season. At number seven, a breakaway dunk by sophomore standout Octavio Brito. In the Owls home opener against Rutgers Newark, Brito picks the pocket of Chino Anyawu and springs down the court for the jam as the Owls would roll 102 to 66. At number six, the return of women's basketball co-captain Jackie Alabrandi. After missing more than a year with an injury, Alabrandi marked her return to the court against Rhode Island College on December 10th. With two minutes left in the second quarter, she goes up for the layup plus the foul and converts the three-point play to get the Owls within one. At number five, an outstanding individual effort by men's basketball co-captain Jeff Hunter. Facing MIT just after Thanksgiving, Hunter tips away the inbound pass, corrals the ball, and heads down court to finish with the slam dunk as the Owls would finish with the 102-90 win. Our number four plays a milestone for men's basketball co-captain Jeff Hunter. In an early season matchup against Southern Maine, Hunter backs in late in the first half and gets the friendly roll to become the 38th player in school history to score 1,000 points. Hunter finished with 22 points, 15 rebounds, and 3 assists on the day. At number 3, Keene State's women's cross country captures their first LEC title since 2018. The Owls placed four runners in the top 10, led by junior Maggie St. John, who was second in 19 minutes, 48.7 seconds. Also earning all-conference honors included graduate student Grace Furlong, sophomore Aurora Kuto, and freshman Anna O'Reilly, as the Owls won the race by 18 points. At number two, it's the qualification of Jake Pearl to the NCAA Division III Championships. Pearl, who was second overall at the LEC Championships, became the first KSC runner in seven years to qualify for the NCAA Championships. At the NCAA Regional Race, Pearl finished 17th overall, covering the 8K course in 25 minutes, 49.9 seconds to punch his ticket for East Lansing, Michigan and the full NCAA championship. And our number one play of the semester comes to us from Keene State Volleyball. The Owls, who had not won the LEC championship since 2008, faced Plymouth State in the conference championship game. The Owls, who had dropped the first set, found themselves down 23-12 in the second set before storming back for a stunning 26-24 victory. And after dropping the third set, Keene State rallied to tie the match with a 25-22 fourth set win. And in the final set, the Owls rolled out to a 10-1 lead to complete a thrilling comeback and capture their first conference title in 14 years. The fall 2022 semester was a great one, and we look forward to more outstanding plays as we begin 2023. For more coverage of Keene State Athletics, follow us on all our social media platforms and YouTube at Keene State Owls, as well as online at KeeneOwls.com. Yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> Help out here, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I don't literally don't know any of them. We should have studied. Abe <laughs> didn't give his heads up. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Jackie Alibrandi. My name is Riley Burgess, and we're here to play. What, what do, do you, you know? know? The sparks, the links. Um, <clears throat> Mercury. You want to help out here, big dog? <laughs> I didn't watch the Um, <laughs> come on, big dog. Help me out. <laughs> Liberty. Oh, Keep going. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> help out here, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I don't literally don't know any of them. <clears throat> Honestly, that might be the best we got. Oh, 
That's what it was. We suck. Yeah, dang. Uh, Yukon, North Carolina. South Carolina. Um, Notre Dame. Mm, Kentucky. Two. Uh, two. Uh, two. Yes. <laughs> um. Hmm. Um. Arkansas. Oregon. Since 2000, that's like 23 years. <laughs> um. Oh, Boston College. Boston University. <laughs> oh, Boston. Arizona. Oh. Georgia. Michigan. Yeah, we are guessing states. Florida. San Fran. I'm not good at this game. Gonzaga. Indiana. No. I forget who Caitlin Clark's on. Miami. It's in Florida. <laughs> Washington. <laughs> um, Nevada, I don't know. I'm trying to go through states now. We should have studied. Abe. <laughs> Didn't give his heads up. <laughs> um, you don't get any hands. Michigan State. Ha! Yes. Now we're. Yeah, I do. Ohio that. State? Utah. <laughs> I don't want to tap out, but I feel like we should. I feel like it's getting worse. Yeah, okay, wait. Let's get one more. Okay, yeah, we might tap out. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. There it is. We stink. We stink. Yeah, okay. Okay, so um, our seniors were Jordan, Lily, Tamara. Mm -hmm. Juniors were Jenny and Bree. Uh, sophomores, Ani. yeah. Or Ariana. Yeah, Ani. Um, Michelle, Leah, Sam. Mm -hmm. Me, you, Katie, Mary, Colby. Jenny Green. Haley. DeRosa. Oh, Haley. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. quiet during the summer when most students are home, but that doesn't mean it's completely empty. Students are working and learning here year-round. There's tour guides and student workers like me, and students are interning all over the Monadnock region. Many of our majors require hands-on learning, and our students are working as reporters, videographers, environmental advocates, and scientific researchers to gain experience. Here's a look at what's happening right here in our city this summer. A single thread is unique, like each of us, full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. But we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, 
we can celebrate our differences, embrace each other, and fortify the ties among us. A single thread can fray, yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms. A new strength created by the fabric of the whole. Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our threads, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible. The true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. We can achieve so much more when we are all as one. What a season. The confetti is going to fall. Now she goes and she's got it. How sweet is this and how wonderful for the sport. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're going to have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, be a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. Welcome back for the start of the second half. Around a minute and a half out, so it gives me a minute and a half to talk about what was just given to me, the halftime stats. Logan, can I tell you something? Go for it. We, like I said, we have 14 turnovers, but what sticks out to me is the fact that they have more points off of turnovers than we have actual points. So I'm sure they have 23 points off turnovers. We have 22. Do you think that was something that Coach Boucher talked about in the locker room? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, protecting the basketball is key. And uh, I think they need to make some adjustments going against this uh, pressure that we've seen from Southern Maine. I think they need to bring another guard into the backcourt and get um, the middleman flashing um, to the ball as the ball is moved around the court. I mean. You need to swing the ball. There's too many cross-court passes against the zone. And then again, they're just dribbling the ball along the sideline, playing into the press. Um, a f definitely a few adjustments that need to be made. And then also, once they do beat the press, which they have several times, if you, got, if you don't have anything going forward, you need to take the air out of the ball a little bit. You need to set something up. Uh, you can't rush into your offense then. Couldn't agree more with you, Logan. Let's take a look at some other stuff that we were given. 
Keen State is leading the charge in the offensive rebounds department. We have six, they have two. And you can mainly connect that to, I think, Samantha Lee. Samantha Lee has been very good down low on the offensive board. She put one up re towards the end of the second quarter. Uh, it was off of a free throw. But we've been crashing the boards on our own free throws, and, it's, and it showed. So that is something to look at that is good for this Keene State team. As Riley Burgess does start off the game, she was taken out pretty early in the first quarter because of foul trouble. But now that she's back in the game, hopefully the Owls can try to pick apart that press more and maybe can even make a little bit of a run here. This game is not over until the fat lady sings. And I don't hear any singing yet, Logan. Neither do I. Magaboy will start it. Murray. Murray pulls up. No hesitation. Dernford gets the board. It'll be jump ball and it'll be Southern Maine possession. Cito. Vaughn turns it over. Here's McAvoy. And that is a travel by Ariana Murray. Got a little bit too excited there. Cito. Seen a little bit of pressure from the Owls against Southern Maine. Trying to flip the script a little bit. Well, it's worked so far. Haven't gotten anything yet. In the corner, here's Gould. Ramsdell. And that's a travel. It only takes a couple turnovers. You come down, splash a couple threes, maybe some and one sprinkled in there here and there. They can easily come back into this ball game. This is not, it's not like they're playing, no disrespect to the Southern Maine team, it's not like they're playing a team that's very high up in the LEC standings. Stuff like this happens all the time. And a comeback would not be unheard of if you're the Key State Owls. Here's Burgess to McAvoy. In the corner, here's Gagne. Gagne will put it up, and she'll go to the line and shoot two. Almost had an M1 there. With a good take by Gagne. Southern Maine foul number 21, Ashley Aceto. Elizabeth Gagne with five points. That's her first team's first. She's tied for the highest score on the Owls right now. It's her and Kenzie Durnford who both have five. Unable to hit Turnford, almost got the board, but it's taken away by Ramsdell. Here's Gould in the corner, thought about a three, she'll dribble in, puts it up, and can't hit. Here's Burgess with the board. Here's McAvoy, she's running. Over to Gagne, what a nice pass for McAvoy. What a good block by Vanessa Vaughn. Ramsdell, she's going to be working on Burgess. Great pass to Gould. Here's Aceto. Nice shot by Burgess, able to grab it and does. Gives it over to McAvoy. Riley Burgess showing why she's team captain and important to this Owl squad. McAvoy thought about it. Here's Ariana Murray. Tees up. Durnford with the board and she'll put it back up and gets the deuce. Kenzie Durnford now with seven. And that'll take us to another timeout where the score is 43-24 in favor of Southern Maine. We'll be back shortly. I believe sportsmanship is a, it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. And welcome back, where the Owls have breathed a little life. They've been able to get down. They've been their press has been working a little bit. A couple turnovers from Southern Maine. Anything's possible, Logan. I'm telling you, 
I believe, in the Keene State Owls. Yes, and we just got our first basket of the second half. And like you said, we have, we're in a press now. If we can get some steals, we can get some uh, Southern Maine to turn the ball over and uh, get quick buckets so we can set up our press. And if we turn Southern Maine over, they don't, they don't have any time to set up their press. So and then in, in the half court as well, if you, if you play good team defense, that's the best way to negate the press is playing defense and not letting the ball get, go in the basket if, against you. Couldn't agree more with you, Logan. Southern Maine, let's see if they make any adjustments to this press. Like we talked about, they put a girl in the middle because like that, now Ramsdell, because Burgess has to fall back. Here's Gould. In the corner, Vaughn. Nice cross-court pass. Wow, great defense. Almost negated by better offense. Southern Maine grabs the board. Gagne working on Gould. Up top. Aceto with it. Here's Ramsdell. And can hit. Burgess gets the board. Ramsdell is down. They have numbers. And they'll say it was a travel by Kate McAvoy. Kate McAvoy did have the right idea, though. When somebody's down, you need to run. You have the numbers. And if you get down there and establish an offense right away, because Ramsdell was very slow to get up, that's a very real possibility that you can get a get a nice shot down there from three. That's wide, way more wide open than you'd think. The Jifico. And that'll be a foul by Ariana Murray. Now me personally, Logan, I happen to think that she could have stepped on the half court line before the foul, but he might have his contacts in. I have my glasses on. <laughs> you never know. Jifico. Over in the corner, here's Vaughn. Vaughn will dribble it in. Up top, here's Gould. Can't connect him. Burgess with the board. Riley Burgess. Ariana Murray. Ariana Murray looking for someone to come up and help her. Here's Durnford. Durnford pulls it back. Can't connect. And Burgess almost gets the board, but doesn't. Board is taken by Gabby Green. Here's Ashley Aceto, over to Green. McAvoy was unable to gamble on there a little bit, which resulted in an easy deuce. It's a good cut from Gould as well. She finds herself in double digit, digits now after that layup. Ariana Murray pulls up, can't connect, but the board taken away by Durnford. Gives it over to Burgess. Burgess Maybe even thought about a three there. Nice pass inside by Burgess. Here's Ariana Murray. Got to finish after that pass. And she can't do it, but she'll go to the line for two. Ariana Murray muscling her way down low. Yeah, kind of kind of opposite there. It was Burgess on the perimeter, and she made a post entry to Ariana Murray, the guard. So decent move in the post from Ariana. Unlucky not to finish and get the end one. That was a tough pass by Burgess, too. Rocketed it down there. Murray can't hit on the first one. She's feeling some frustration. Gagne looked at her and said, take a deep breath. And can't hit on the second one, but Burgess almost gets it. Can't grab it, but that might be. That's Keene State's ball. Great job by number 40. Not giving up on the play. Burgess definitely also the tallest one out there. So that can definitely work to Keene State's advantage when it comes to passing and rebounding. Murray able to draw the foul. Forced to take Dejifico out of the game. That was our third foul, too. Got to get it in, got to get it in. Here's Burgess. 
Murray thought about it. Murray will dribble in. Murray will pull up. Nice trap. And to the disliking of the crowd. Hey, Coach Boucher's out of the seat as well. Oh, Coach Boucher's up? Oh, he's mad. He's mad. Oh, you can see it in his eyes. He's yelling at the ref. Also, Ariana Murray's fourth foul. And That's you can't really foul? blame him. Yes, Man. it is. You can't, a, you can't blame him. Um, they got the Huskies where they wanted them. She dribbled into the corner right in front of us, and they got the trap exactly where they wanted it, and uh, yep. bailed out by the refs, the Huskies were, so. Oh, an awesome defense. We're gonna get another foul. This one's gonna go against Burgess, I believe. Bradley Burgess pleading with the ref to figure out what she did wrong. That's gonna be her third. That's She's her third also gonna have to take a seat, so. Here comes Samantha Lee. Samantha Lee who's played well for this Owls team so far. Right and there leaves Gould wide open for three, but can't connect. Rebound taken by Samantha Lee. Gabby Green now not worrying about grabbing that from Samantha Lee, but unable to grab it. Here's McAvoy over to Gagne. A screen by Durnford. Here's Lutzi. Lutzi, why not? Pull up. Long rebound taken by Lee. McAvoy with it. Gives it to Gagne. Gagne will shoot. And we'll almost get it. And Lee can't hit. Lutzi tries to grab it, but can't. Ashley Aceto with the board. And Lee just grabbed three quick boards after subbing in for Riley Burgess. And, then and that's an offensive foul. Lee able to draw it on Vanessa Vaughn. Emma Haskell will now check in for the Huskies. Coaches like, we're gonna play a, a, at least up to a half court press. Where are you guys going? And it works! And Durnford will grab it. Durnford able to put it up. That's what you love to see. 45 26 lead for Southern Maine. Couple of uh, almost steals there from the Huskies. I thought they had, could have had two steals on two different passes, but instead Kenzie Durnford is going to find her, find herself open for two. Down the inside, Aceto will get the easy deuce. McAvoy looking for something, almost turns it over, but instead Lutzi will draw the foul from Amy Fleming. Are going to be in the bonus now. With 4 4 remaining in the third quarter, the score is Southern Maine 47, Keene State 26. Let's see, connects on the first. Gagne trying to lead the team. More than likely talking about what their defensive strategy will be. Let's see what they can do. Keene State saying, don't shovel dirt on us yet. We're going to keep trying. And they get a nice another turnover by Southern Maine. Gagne will trigger in over to McAvoy. McAvoy looking for someone over to Gagne. Gagne, nice no-look pass inside the Lee. Over the corner, here's Durnford. Gagne. Little hesitation, but pulls up. Can't connect, but a board by Durnford. And she goes back up and gets the two. Kenzie Durnford. Cutting the lead to 17. 
That's her 11th point of the game. Almost another turnover. On the inside, here's Gould. Dernford's on her. Amy Fleming has the ball again. Inside, Gabby Green puts it in. That's a tough shot from number 20. And a bit unlucky there for Keene State as I thought they played good defense, forced uh, the Huskies into a tough shot, and it just happens to fall for them. Gagne with it inside the lead. Gagne on the inside of Durnford. Durnford puts it up and hits again. Kenzie Durnford. Almost another turnover. There's been some new life for these Owls as they get another turnover. Here comes Kate McAvoy. She's running down quickly. Here's Elizabeth Gagne. On the inside, to who else? Kenzie Durnford puts it up, can't hit, but will go to the line and shoot two. That's a good pass, and I like it too because you find somebody like Durnford who has had the past couple of buckets for the, the Owls and is your leading scorer in this game and pretty much just gave it back to the hot hand is what I'm trying to say, and now she finds herself at the, at the free throw line. Kenzie Durnford looking for her Hall of Fame takeover badge. <laughs> Puts up the first, hits on the first. And we've seen Keene State in this second, in this second half, in these couple of minutes, as they beat the press, and then people like McAvoy, people like Gagne, immediately hold the ball at the top of the key and just set up an offense, and it's been working these past few possessions for Keene State. And you just know that Coach Boucher is loving this awesome defense that the Owls are putting on right now. He said he loves it when they at least try hard, when you can see the effort. You can definitely see the effort coming in here. Here's to Durnford. Durnford, why not? Let it fly. And Samantha Lee with the board. She dribbles, puts it back up, can't hit. We're gonna get a timeout by Southern Maine. Uh, they are up by 15 with a minute 50 left in the third quarter. College sports fans, get ready for game day with officially licensed merchandise from the NCAA official online shop, ncaa.com slash shop. Get the whole family geared up with the best collection of apparel and accessories, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, headwear, championship gear, and more. Visit the NCAA shop for today's special offer and rep your favorite team now. Only at NCAA.com slash shop. And we welcome you back. Keen State has a little bit of life here coming to the end of the third quarter. We're going to take a minute right now to talk about the U University of Southern Maine women's basketball coach, Samantha Norris. Logan, what do you have for me? Yeah, this is going to be her eighth season that she is, has been at the head of the Southern Maine helm. And she has a long history with not only the tradition of great basketball in the state of Maine, but also with the long-standing tradition of excellence in women's basketball at the University of Southern Maine. Um, she had successful careers at Lake Region High School and Kobe College before this and was a Miss Maine basketball finalist in 2006. Uh, she's had conference and regional honors in, during her high school playing career and it has really led her into being her, the coach that she is today with all that experience and all the, those accolades that she received while she was playing basketball. Oh, absolutely. It'll be the Huskies ball. In the corner, Haskell, and another turnover. Almost. Okay. <laughs> Almost. Sorry, getting a little bit too ahead of myself. <laughs> Durnford, right in front of her, inside leave, swats it out with six seconds left remaining on the shot clock. 131 left on the real clock. Score is 49-34, Southern Maine. To the side. Can't hit. 
Let's see with the board. Gagne will have it. Gagne over to McAvoy. McAvoy looking for Durnford. Durnford with it. Gives it back out. McAvoy. Gagne. Lutze. Lutze likes to pull up. Three Jeez. seconds left. Lutze's got to put something up. Oh, it almost hits it. Lee almost grabs it, but it'll be Southern Main ball. Unlucky bounce there for number 13. And that'll lead to an easy deuce for Haskell. 51-34. Here's McAvoy, over to Gagne. Oh, Gagne had her in the air. Here's Lutze. Elizabeth Gagne, down low, Durnford. Durnford puts it up, can't hit. 20 seconds remaining, shot clock is off. Ball's in the hands of Amy Fleming. Lutze's on her. We're gonna set something up with 10 seconds left. Goes over the backboard, 3.9 remaining. Keen State does have enough time to get a shot up. It might be a full quarter. Gagne has it. And they say that is Southern Main ball, so they'll get the ball back with 1.8 with a chance for the final points of the third quarter. You don't want to give up an open look here if you're Keen State. No, absolutely not. Huskies looking to set up a play. Turn around, jumper. And with that, we'll take us to the end of the third quarter where the score is Southern Maine 51. Keith St. Owls 34. We'll be back shortly. It's always been more than just a game. It is a legacy. Support the USA Basketball Foundation as we look to expand that legacy. For her, for them, for us, all of us, together. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're going to have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, be a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Logan, I'm looking at something right in front of me. And we talked about how in the first half, Keen State had 14 turnovers. In the third quarter, they only had three. So whatever Coach Boucher told them, it definitely worked because Southern Maine is now up to 15 turnovers. It almost is like the, the script has flipped for both these teams. It's just that Southern Maine got off to a really hot start and was able to get a lot of points towards the beginning. But now that they only lead by 17, do you think that has something to do with the low turnover count that Keen State had in the third quarter? Yeah, it's, uh, it's that as well as Keith State's also applying some pressure, turning and getting Southern Maine to turn the ball over themselves. And um, it hasn't been as easy for Southern Maine to do what they want to do and control the pace of the game in the second half so far as it was in the first half. And here we go now. Here's Elizabeth Gagne. Let's see, back over to Gagne. Outside, McAvoy. Durnford, who's been the star of the game for Keene State so far, gives it to Lutze. Inside to Lee. Lee able to save it. Oh my goodness. That'll be a jump ball. Wow, where did Elizabeth Gagne come from? Jump ball, possession, Southern, Southern Main ball. A great hustle by the Owls there on that play. Egifico. We had to sit for a little while because she picked up that foul. Gave her her third earlier in the third. Wolf can't hit. 
Easy board, but unable to grab it. Keen State gets a lucky, lucky break there as Kenzie Durnford gets the board, and she'll bring it down herself. Here's McAvoy. Let's see. Let's see. Pull up Jay. Can't hit. Rebound taken by Southern Maine. Here's Gould. Up top, Vaughn. And that's offensive foul again by Vanessa Vaughn. Drawn in by Samantha Lee. That's Vaughn's third foul of the game. McAvoy over to Durnford. Gagne with it. Let's see. Pull up. Unable to get it, but Lee with the board. And Lee, and one! Samantha Lee will go to the line for the three-point play. Samantha Lee has been, has been good tonight for the Owls. Uh, she's seemingly been all over the court, uh, has several offensive rebounds, and now she just... Clutch and one, or not clutch, but a huge and one for Keene State right now. And now her point total is six points so far in today's game. Six points, eight rebounds for number 23. Unable to hit the free throw. Only a 15 point lead for Southern Maine. Here's Gould. Jiffico has it. Over to Sito. Almost another turnover. Four seconds left. The Jiffico has to put it up. Tough shot. She's able to get it to go. How did that go in, Logan? <laughs> Beats me, man. Beats me. But good. Again, good job by Keene State. Got a forced a late shot clock shot and a tough one. Just unlucky to see it fall for them. Let's see, teed off and was unable to hit it. Aceto. Almost pulled up. Ramsdell. Ramsdell will pull up. Can't hit. Rebound taken by Let's see. McAvoy. Dribbling up quickly. Durnford. The Jiffico. What's his honor? Here comes Vaughn. Nice, another rebound by Lutze. Able to get the defensive board. Gagne will control it. Over to Lutze. Gagne wants to dribble in, and she might. Nice bounce down court pass, but Lee unable to hit it. Here's McAvoy. Inside Great to Lee. Pass. Lee puts it up, oh. can't hit. It's a good post entry there from McAvoy. Just Lee, a little bit off balance, couldn't get it to fall. Aceto. Here's the Jiffico. Vaughn will go on the inside. Vaughn will put it up, and Vaughn will hit. McAvoy. And Coach Boucher will call a timeout. Score is 55-36 in favor of Southern Maine. We'll be back shortly. Comprehensive learning is being able to adapt to experiences and apply the things that I learned. Being an athlete and juggling academics helped me grow as a person and things that I've learned, I was able to apply it in another field, putting them into everyday life. 
Developing comprehensive learning helped me prioritize certain things to make sure I get to where I want to be. College sports fans, get ready for game day with officially licensed merchandise from the NCAA official online shop, ncaa.com slash shop. Get the whole family geared up with the best collection of apparel and accessories, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, headwear, championship gear, and more. Visit the NCAA shop for today's special offer and rep your favorite team now. Only at NCAA.com slash shop. Welcome back as we get back in to the fourth quarter with 5.46 remaining. And from a, a Southern Maine perspective on that last position, I like what they did. They took the air out of the ball a little bit and then got the ball to a girl they knew was going to make a play. And she did indeed, and it was Vanessa Vaughn who went to her, drove to her left and was able to pick up an easy two. Ariana Murray finds McAvoy. Murray, looking for Gagne, Burgess with the screen. Gagne, can't hit, but Burgess with the board. Burgess, nice little drop step, and then she'll hit it. Riley Burgess. Might see Keen get a little desperate and try to go from some steals as, right on cue as Elizabeth Gagne. Divine timing, Logan. <laughs> Riley Burgess, Travel, yep. and she traveled. Yeah, Green checks Green. back in. Something we've talked about for the Skeen State women's team is this is kind of desperation time. Now sitting just about five minutes left in this game, down by a decent amount. You're going to have to go for these steals. Absolutely, they've been doing a good job so far, at least like getting their hands in the passing lanes. Over to the side, here's Gould. Up top. Keen State can grab it, here's Krasinski. It'll be Keen State ball. Gould is fired up. Murray will trigger it in. McAvoy. Gagne looking for someone to help her out. Finds McAvoy. Here's Burgess. Bridges over to Murray, set the screen for her. Here's Murray. Murray has some room, gets inside, can't hit. Goes back out to Gagne, who puts it up, and puts it in Elizabeth Gagne from downtown. Four minutes remaining. Agaboy playing up on Gould. To Jiffico. Outside, here's a Cito. Gould lost it, got it back. Looks like a block from Burgess. But Gabby Green will go to the line and shoot two. Southern Maine, 13 of 17 from the line today, while Keene State's 10 of 18. Shooting 76.5%. Can't hit on the first one. Logan. Keene State has 18 offensive rebounds to Southern Maine's five. You can tell they've been very active on crashing the boards there. Yes, that is impressive. And we've seen people like Samantha Lee. And Riley Burgess worked really hard to get those offensive rebounds. But she also works really hard to get down low, put her body in the paint, get the easy bucket. 
Keene State has bought this lead to only 12. They've been working hard. I think they got to pressure a little bit more, be more in your face defensively. Here's Southern Maine's kind of just passing around the perimeter right now. And Gabby Green will go back to the line and shoot two. That's another foul on Krasinski. First. And Tans the second one. Thirteen point lead for the Huskies. In the corner, Gagne from downtown, but can't hit. Needed that one to fall. And that'll be a travel. Keene State gets a nice break there. Gagne has it. Looking for something. Gagne over to McAvoy. Inside Burgess, Burgess, oh my goodness. Moving her like she was nothing. Love to see that from number 40. We'll take a timeout. 56-45 is the score of this game. Wow, Logan, what'd you think of that? To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity. One to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. As we welcome you back with 2.35 remaining in the game, Keene State has cut this lead down to only 11. I think the player of the game today has easily been number 14, Kenzie Durnford. She's been absolutely relentless down low. Good passing out at the perimeter. There's just been a lot of good stuff that you'd like to see if you're Coach Boucher from number 14. Yeah, that's a little bit interesting that we haven't really seen her on the court for these past couple of minutes to close this game out, so. Maybe he knows something that we don't. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe maybe we will see here in a couple of minutes here. Sure. Aceto will trigger it in. You gotta assume now that the Huskies are gonna wanna play at a much slower pace than they have been. Oh, Gagne, I tried to go for the steal. Nice shot by Krasinski to get it, and she gets the ball herself, and she's bringing it down. She'll go into the contact, puts it up, can't hit. It's a good take for Krasinski there. She had a lane. She went directly to the hoop and just couldn't get it to fall. Keene State at this point only has one more turnover than Southern Maine. Keene State has 20 and Southern Maine has 19. That's crazy after looking at the way that the first half ended. Keen State Bob McAvoy putting her hands in the passing lanes, able to back her, able to batter it out. 140 remaining in the game, scores 56-45 in favor of the Huskies. So we'll have to shoot it. To Jifico. she'll put it up and can hit, and that'll be Southern Main ball. And he did a great job if you're Keen State there. You deflected it out of bounds. For 
on the pass, and then there was three seconds on the shot clock. They got the shot off, and then you couldn't just finish the, def the defensive possession by grabbing a board. Unfortunate there if you're the Owls. Green into the middle, almost a turnover. Here's Gould. Aceto can't hit. That's Burgess's 10th rebound. Fleming will bring it down. Here's Gould. Gould we'll tried to put it up top for Green. Green thought about it. Green will put it up. And that'll be Keene State's ball. Called an offensive foul on Tamron Gould. And with that, we'll have a timeout. Score is 56-45 with 49.4 seconds remaining. A lot more great things to look at if you're Coach Boucher in the second half. Much more in the first. They're a much different team out in the second half. And I think that is mainly because of that awesome press that they were able to implement that forced a lot of Southern Maine turnovers. Yeah, kind of hit them with a taste of their own medicine in the second half with the pressure. And one, one other thing you love to see is the points off turnovers. They had 23 to end the first half. And how many do they have now? 23. So that is good on the Keene State Owls for being able to do something like that in the second half. Now, it might not result in a win today, but it's something that you do want to look at if you're Coach Boucher when you go to practice tomorrow. Keene State with 18 second chance points to Southern Main Street. That could be because of the awesome rebounding that you got from the two bigs, Samantha Lee and Riley Burgess. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's been a fight for those girls today. Defensively, we've seen them all fight. And then offensively, it, was, it wasn't only they were getting boxed out, they were out fighting somebody for the ball. They were crashing from the perimeter. They were making good plays on the ball, reading the ball coming off the rim from the shots from their teammates. And the, I think it's been a good team effort from the big, uh, the front court of the Owls today to get those offensive rebounds. Yeah, it is It is kind of crazy that they have three times the amount of offensive boards as Southern Maine has. Just those their tenacity down low. Southern Maine for the game shooting 43%. Keith State shooting 28%. Wow. And Riley Burgess will go to the line and get two. Now has a chance for an and one play. Put the lead down to nine. A strong catch and a strong finish there from Riley Burgess and a great inbounds pass there from Ariana Murray. Burgess puts it up and can't hit, but Durnford almost with the board, and she does get it, and that's jump ball, and that's Keene State possession. Only a nine point game. I still believe, Logan. I still believe that we can do it. You get a quick three right here, you can do it. Maybe even a four point play. Give it over to Durnford. Durnford puts it up. Can't hit. Ariana Murray with the board, she got it. Couldn't put it home. And, wow. And you now, have the triple team right in front of the Owls bench. And unfortunate not to get a steal there. Coach Boucher is animated right now. <laughs> be a carry. 30.6 seconds remaining. You 
got to push it if you're Keen State. You got to push it. You don't have that much time left. Here's Murray. Murray down there pushing it. And that'll be Keen State. No, that'll be Southern Main Ball. And that'll be a timeout call from Southern Maine. I will give Keene State credit though, they are not giving up. They're still driving, trying to get some trying to get some easy threes, but it just might not be in the cards right now. Southern Maine is our rebounding. Keen State on the defensive boards with 30 to 22. And Southern Maine has the only blocks in this game. Keen State does not have a single block today. While well, Southern Maine has two, we do not have a single block today. Which is kind of crazy that we're so good in the offensive rebounding, but it's just off of missed shots from them. We're not getting any blocks. It is interesting to look at. The Jiffico will trigger it in for the final 22.4 seconds. Jiffico has it. Not sure why no one's fouling. And Riley Burgess is fouled out. It's about to leave. will come back in for the final 7.6 seconds. As Gagne fouls Vaughn, she'll go to the line. And Vaughn cans the first one. And Vaughn can't hit the second one. Lee almost gets the rebound, but Gagne gets it. Three seconds left, two seconds left. Taken away, but Gagne will fall on the floor. And that will do it. The final score of this game is Southern Maine 57, Keene State 47. But don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back shortly with our interview with Coach Keith Luchet. So stay with us. I pledge, I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team on my campus and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. I believe sportsmanship is a a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're gonna have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, be a positive influence, that's being a responsible person.
as we welcome you guys back, we are here now with Coach Keith Boucher. Coach, we were looking at some of the stats from this game, and one thing I wanted to point out is that your girls had 18 offensive rebounds to Southern Maine's six. Is that something that you look at as a positive throughout this game? Yes, I do. I mean, we were bigger than them, so I, I, I'd like to think we're going to get more offensive rebounds, but I guess there's a, it's a catch-22. To get an 18 offensive rebounds, that means you missed 18 shots. So, and some of those were good looks. We're just not putting those down. But offensive rebounding is a, size of, is a sign of effort. And so that, that's a positive sign. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and then another stat we looked at at halftime is their points off of turnovers was 23 at halftime, finished at 23. Um, what are some adjustments you made to protect the ball? Um, did you make any personnel changes? Did you have certain people um, have yes. the ball more in the second yeah, half? We, well, we executed what we were supposed to do against the press. Um, we just made too many bad decisions with the ball. And you give up 23 points on turnovers. I'm glad we didn't give up any on turnovers in the second half. So that's a positive thing. But we have periods and games where we have meltdowns. And trying to figure out a formula to change that. And we challenged them at halftime to come out. I didn't think, and I understand that when you turn the ball over, you get a lot of easier possessions on offense because you're back on your heels. But I didn't think we, we defended well in the first half. We gave up too many dribble drives, and that's, that's what they love to do. And we put ourselves in a bad situation. We had an opportunity. We char charges, and we've taken pride in doing that. We didn't even come close to a charge in the first half. Second half, I think we picked up three or four charges, and that's a sign of effort. It's a sign of unselfishness. So I'm proud about that. But you know what? We, this game is 40 minutes long. In the first 20, we didn't do the things that obviously we're capable of doing because we came back and, and played pretty well. But we gotta we got to find a way. I, I believe that they can, and I believe that we, we, we'll keep working on it. But, you know, it's every day. It's a process. And hopefully we get better as time goes on. Yes, and piecing it together is something that good teams do and can play a complete 40 minutes of basketball game in and game out. So, Coach, thank you for joining us. No, thank you. Great. Have a great day. You too. Passion's love. Passion is love for what you do. Because I think when you face challenges, it comes down to how much you want it and how much you love it. Passion is what keeps you going forward. Seeing so many people that were like-minded and so hardworking in their sport and academics, being surrounded by like-minded people makes you want to be more passionate. I think it pushes you to a, a different level that maybe you didn't think you had. And you can do the best of both worlds and love all of it. And with that, we're going to start our men's basketball game in about 17 minutes. So don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. You can find it right here on lec.com. I'm JJ LeBlanc, joined with Logan Peranta. We'll see you in 17 minutes. You have been watching a Keene State Athletics broadcast on the Owls Media Network. Please tune in to our next broadcast, and thank you for watching.